celebrating 50 years as the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. News. I'm Chris Foster. After a virtual roll call vote during the Democrats' national convention, I'm pleased to announce that Vice President Joe Biden has officially been nominated by the Democratic Party as our candidate for President of the United States. Mississippi Congressman Benny Thompson, convention chairman, former President Bill Clinton. You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years? Blame, bully, and belittle. And you know what Joe Biden will do? Build back better. President Trump tells supporters in Yuma, Arizona. I never thought I'd say anything could compete with 2016. This election that we're going into is the most important election in the history of our country. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom mobilizes the National Guard to help with around 30 wildfires burning in the state. The town of Boulder Creek is evacuated. America's listening to Fox News. From the Fox News Podcasts Network. Download and listen to Living the Bream, hosted by Fox News Channel's Shannon Bream. The hospitals did this because they didn't want beds to be taken up by these patients. They wanted to keep them open for other cases. And they unloaded them on nursing home populations. I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I've read a little bit about civil rights law. And it seems as if those particular kind of actions have what's called a disparate impact. I think that's something we should focus on. Subscribe and listen now by going to foxnewspodcast.com. Did you hear the news? Now you can. With instant updates from Fox News for Amazon Alexa. Breaking stories and top headlines. Daily coronavirus developments. The economy and so much more. Brought to you by Fox News. America's number one cable news network. Plus, setup couldn't be easier. Because everything's ready to go in the app. Just say, Alexa, play news from Fox. In Fox News. It's the latest when you need it. On demand from Fox News and Amazon Alexa. Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can re-key locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broadway. Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 8 o'clock here at the Big Dog WIFOFM in time for the world famous Butch and Bomb Show, brought to you by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, First Southern Bank, and Murphy Builder Supply. And today we have in the studio both Amy, Danny, and Reggie Burge with the school system. Again, the good news is school will start on Monday, August 24th, but tomorrow's a big day because that's the open houses and that, all that's being done virtual. And we just wanted both of y'all to come in and explain what's taking place, how the how do they do the virtual, where do they go for the information, how it's going to work. I think it's all set for 3 o'clock tomorrow at every school in the county. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, okay. So who wants to go first? Ladies first. We'll, let Amy, we'll let Amy go first. <laughs> so um, families should expect a Kenbo text message sometime this evening that will be from their child's teacher in the older grades. It will be like the homeroom teacher or the first period teacher. Um so that they'll know, so that they'll have a link to go to that virtual open house after 3 o'clock tomorrow. Um, most of the schools have kind of a general page so that you can get a message from the principal, assistant principal, you know, different folks at the school. But then you'll also be able to click on your teacher's link to get a 
um, virtual tour of the classroom to hear the teacher talk a little bit about what's in store during the the year and those kinds of things. Um, Our teachers have done a fabulous job of um, structuring this virtual open house. And as a matter of fact, as I've watched many of the videos, I've thought, Really, in some ways, this is almost a better way for parents to get a lot of good information because at our traditional open houses, there are a lot of people, and you might get to say hello to the teacher, but you don't really get to get a lot of information from them. And so we're really excited about what this format has to offer. And while we had to go to it in response to a challenge, um, I think that it's going to be a positive thing for our families and for our community. And everybody knows the website by now is www.wayne.k12.ga.us. So they go on that website. But, Reggie, um, it's going to be a different – I mean, how to explain each school does it so at the um, same each, time? Each individual school has a website uh, that's that's kind of linked to that, that home – the system webpage. Um, but if they'll, if they'll click on the, the system website, they can find their school, and they can go to that school website uh, from the main page, and then they'll be able to access the links from there. Okay. And uh, the links are also going to be many of the links. I don't know that all are, but many of them are also going to be in Spanish uh, for our, uh, our English, our, our, our Spanish-speaking families. Uh, I do want to give a shout-out to our ladies in our, our migrant program, uh, Anna Rivera, Adriana Lopez, and Alex Chavaria. They, are, they have done an awesome job of working with these teachers and getting some of these videos translated over to Spanish so that those families can also – Um, access those and how long does the open house normally last um you know the principals i think have um done some messaging you can hear a message from almost everybody at the school i believe Mm -hmm. and the teacher messages are probably 10 minutes or so and so you know if a family that has three students they might spend 30 to 40 minutes online or so you know at the high school where students have more teachers they're going to want to visit each of their teachers pages to um, hear their messages Um, I do need to give a shout out to our model classroom teachers Sandy Jones our technology director created this group of teachers several years ago um, and they work with technology they're techie they like their technology and they help our other teachers at the school learn new tools and They have been really instrumental in setting up this virtual open house. Ms. Jones met with them mid-summer, and they went to work. And um, just within a couple of days had some really quality templates out there for the teachers. And I'm really proud of the work that those folks have done. Well, the board voted yesterday. School starts Monday. So will these students get everything on the open house, what they need for school on Monday? Where are those lists at? Because, you know, how parents go with their list and this grade needs this and this grade needs this are all those lists available for parents yes they're on the website and they're actually under the parents link and so when you open our web page there's a banner across the middle of the page i think parents is the very last tab there if you click on parents the supply list are at the bottom and you click on supply list and then it'll open each school's supply list um And typically some of the local stores that sell school supplies will also have some of those supply lists available in the store. Like I said, we all know we're in uncharted territory with the pandemic. Uh, The school board stated yesterday the majority of them just felt good that they gave the parents the option. Uh, It turned out to be about 15% chose to do virtual. And you said across the state the highest you've seen is 30%. Most schools are like in between the 15 20% range of parents choosing virtual. Is that correct? Yes. And, you know, that, that data is kind of um, informal data just from me talking to different people around the state. But, um, but I do feel like in Wayne County we've given people a choice. We have um, good options for our virtual learners. Um, you know, we do expect there to be maybe a few um, roadblocks, but we'll get through those. Um, we're trying to really work through those now so that next week goes very smoothly. Um, and we have, I think, good mitigating factors in place for our students who are coming to school. And we just ask that everybody do their best to follow the rules. Um, I think if we follow the rules and we talk to our students about the importance of wearing masks and good hand-washing hygiene, um, 
I think that we can keep our students and our staff members safe and still provide a quality educational experience. Mm-hmm. And common sense is, have to, is going to have to come into play. I get a lot of calls from parents, you know, about young kids. What if they don't wear the mask compared to high Like Jay Brinson mentioned, he'll be here tomorrow. He can explain it even better. But he said that if a high school kid consistently doesn't wear the match, eventually it's going to be insubordination. Right. Whereas the middle – a younger kid at elementary school, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be handled a little bit differently. But right. like I said, common sense is going to have to come into play in each classroom, you know, dealing with each student. Right. Would you and agree? Then, I mean, it's just it's going to be impossible for these, to expect a child to wear a mask eight hours a day. They'll, they'll have times during the day where they can get a little, little relief from that. Of course, they'll have breakfast time and lunch time. But um, there will also be times when the, when the uh, teachers can take the kids outside, get them separated, let them let them take those masks that's off, what, and get yeah, some fresh. That's what I heard they're doing over in Appling County. They get right. like they call them mask breaks, where they right. go outside and take the mask off mm-hmm. and get some fresh air and things like that. So I'm sure that'll be going on next week here in Wayne County as well. Right. And we're also providing. We've got 650 face shields that we were uh, that were donated by Oishi and Kamors. They they uh, they were two great partners that have helped our school system um, in, in in getting back to school and, and trying to get a new sense of normalcy. Uh, but they they have donated the the funds for those masks, and um, we've uh, distributed those out to the schools for the teachers and the para pros uh, since they're working so cro- closely with the kids. So we wanted to um, just mention those two two. Uh, Organizations and thank them for their help. And like I said, the teachers have been back to, for several days. So, are they excited that school is going to open up, or what's the um, overall reaction by the teachers? Yes, and and you know, um, people ha- all have their own personal feelings. But I glanced at social media last night and I saw a lot of teacher bitmojis um, doing a little jumping for joy dance. And so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. I had um I, I had composed the. Uh, in anticipation of what was going to be decided last night, I had about 4.30 yesterday, I composed the, a message to send out to all of our faculty and staff members. And uh, as soon as Chairman Ellis hit that gavel, I sent that thing out and got text, got, got messages back immediately that the teachers that were just excited to get get things rolling. Well, I think they made a good comment yesterday at the board meeting. The teachers were just ready to know what the situation mm-hmm. was. Everybody was in limbo until yesterday's vote. But right. now the vote's been made. The plan's in motion. Everybody now knows it's opened up on Monday. Those that decide to do virtual are doing virtual, but the rest are coming to school, and the school buses will be rolling Monday morning, and hopefully everything will run smoothly. Mm-hmm. But as they mentioned, uh, if things do go haywire, there is a plan to back up and punt. So right. But right. hopefully it won't come to that, but that plan is also still in place, you know, if they have to shut it down for a couple of weeks because no one knows what's going to happen. Right. I mean, we're just, like I said, we're in uncharted territory. Yeah. And our teachers have done double duty, really, because we are ready. I mean, if we come to school for a few weeks and then for some reason we need to have targeted closures or full system closures, um, we're ready for that and we're ready to pivot into a distance learning plan for our students. And so our teachers have really done double duty. Um, you know, teachers love two things. They love students and they love learning or their content area. And so I think that um, the fact that teachers know that they're going to meet their kids Monday in person and be able to share that love of learning means a lot to our teachers. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm thankful that they have that attitude. Now, Reggie, you've been having this contest. School starts Monday. Do we have a winner of the contest yet? I've had four pit folks contact me. The most, that in, most of, the, of the 30 signs that are out there, the most that have been found so far is 24. So they can keep looking. They're, they're, they're out there. <laughs> so they they're have time. They're, they're well, visible. Well, they're in there. They have time. But Friday's the deadline for that. Oh, Friday's the deadline. Yes. Okay. Well, make sure you let us know who the winner is. I sure will. Because, uh, explain the contest for those that may want to we, get uh, We purchased uh, 30 signs, and they're, they're, bl- they're like the little political, political yard signs you see out there. Um, they're, uh, they're black with white print, and they say, uh, we miss your – and it says your with the Y has parentheses around it, so it's actually our students. Um, and uh, it's from the Wayne County Teachers. And it has on the bottom of it that school starts August 24th. And we put those out there uh, just to let the community know that we do miss these kids. We've been without our students now uh, for, what, five and a half months or so and um, you know, since the mid-March. So um, that's, as, as Amy mentioned, the, the teachers love students. And that's the reason we, we do what we do. You know, we're, we're not in it to, to uh, make a killing. We're in it to help kids and because we love students. So we put those out there um, to let the community know that 
that we miss our kids. We're ready to get back to work. Um, there are 30 of them scattered around town, um, and they're all they're all within the city limits, except for there there are a few out there at uh, Scriven and Elementary. So I'll give you a hint where those are. Um, <laughs> so that was a freebie. Um, but uh, if if whoever can find uh, all 30 signs, uh, or the person who has the most signs, if, if if by Friday 24 is the most that have been found, I've kept the list of who who who's called me. Um, then that that family or that person will receive a fully stocked book bag of school supplies. Okay. Well, once again, virtual open house tomorrow, so once again, give them the link and the instructions for tomorrow. Okay. So our school our school system webpage is www.wayne.k12.ga.us, and from that main page, you can go to the um, school pages, and you'll find links there, and also check your Kenvo text messages. And if you've not called your school and updated your Infinite Campus phone numbers, there's still time to do that today. Okay. I know you all got to get back. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. I still have Jay here tomorrow. He'll have more information on the beginning of school, but the vote's been taken. Again, schools begin Monday, and everything's ready to roll. So Ready to go. We're Thanks just keeping our fingers us. crossed. Hope everything goes well. Yes, sir. We do Thank appreciate you all coming in, and we'll be back with more of the show right after this. And then a Walkie Walker Jones. Sizzling savings are going on right now at Walker Jones Chrysler Dodge Jeep Rams Summer Clearance Event. That's right. August is time to clear the decks with 20% off MSRP on every 2020 Ram 1500 crew cab and quad cab in stock. Or choose 0% for up to 72 months. Like the sound of 0% for 72 months? You've got it. On select 2020 Pacificas, Durangos, Jeep Renegades, Compass, Cherokee, and Grand Cherokee. And this special rate has no payments for 90 days. Walker Jones, Memorial Drive in Waycross, and online at Walker Jones Chrysler Jeep Dodge.com. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Special APR is with approved credit from Chrysler Capital. Ends 831.20. Get the best deal from Walker Jones. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. A bank that puts people first. First Southern Bank, investing in you since 1907. Serving Jessup, Patterson, and Waycross. A true community bank led by experienced neighborhood bankers that live and work in our community. Offering competitive loan options for commercial and consumer clients. Stop by the Jessup branch and meet branch manager Mandy Yeomans and her fantastic team. Call 912-810-1540. Let First Southern Bank be your bank of choice. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. 814 with WIFOFM, Big Dog Country, World Famous Butch and Bomb Show, brought to you by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, First Southern Bank and Murphy Builder Supply. And again, a reminder, we'll have School Superintendent Jay Brinson in the studio tomorrow. He'll have more information on the beginning of school on Monday, so look forward to that. Appreciate Reggie and Amy being here today to talk about the virtual house, which is tomorrow at 3 o'clock. I also remind people, a lot of people asking about this coming Friday night's uh, inter-squad scrimmage. Again, what's the protocol going to be? Uh, and they're going to ask you to bring up masks to get into the stadium. There's going to be no concessions, no admission. Uh, get, so come on out and watch the preview of the upcoming season. It's going to be just like a scrimmage uh, practice, but uh, again, see a lot of talent. Again, our congrats to these two Wayne County kids who have been named to the Class 5A Preseason All State team again. Weston Franklin was uh, given. You know, most people expected him to be on the right. team, but uh, Jaden Miller, a tight end, H back for Wayne County, a surprise selection. Our congrats to him. Again, hasn't really been recruited much, but uh, this should help him 
being on the preseason All State team, uh, talking to coaches, uh, they're high on this kid. So he's a very talented athlete. So he'll be a big part of the offense this year as an H back and tight end. So our congratulations to both Weston Franklin and Jaden Miller, both selected to the Class Five A preseason All State team by the AJC. So it's amazing what you can do with Tech. That uh, announcement video that Weston had, that thing was yeah. really sharp. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. But again, still trying to get him in studio. But they've been practicing each morning. So uh, when the School gets underway. Hopefully, he'll have some free time. We can get him in to talk about his selection to go to Georgia Tech. I know a lot of people. AJC had a nice article about him, uh, you know, going to Georgia Tech and making that verbal commitment. So, exciting season again. Expect to get underway in a couple of weeks. Uh, Friday, September fourth. You know want to nice major in at, at Tech? Uh, uh, I thought I asked him that in on the spot. <laughs> I, I thought I entered, but I can't. Okay. I just yeah. got him. I don't remember. I'm sure it's. Uh, a good major, though. Pretty smart They've got kid. some majors out there other than tech stuff as well at, at the Institute. I better keep my mind shut about Georgia Tech. Yeah, okay. I'll get in trouble. You know, you know where my allegiance is. Yes. So we have all kinds of jokes about Georgia Tech. But I'll keep those to myself. Okay. <laughs> that would be the smart move over here. Yeah, I won't go there. <laughs> Call me later. I'll give you all that. Inside scoop on Georgia Tech's. All right, so run down the dates for everything starting in for somebody that might have missed uh, when school starts and when football starts. School starts Monday, you know, August 24th. Again, the virtual open house is tomorrow at 3 o'clock, but and the board voted yesterday 4-1 to one to begin school on Monday, August 24th. So buses will be rolling beginning Monday. And, again, the inter-squad game is this Friday night, 7.30 at J.C. Stadium. Again, no concessions, no admission. They do ask that you wear a mask if you come in, but, again, you can social distance and probably take the mask off during the game. But, again, they want you to stay away from the competition area. So each school is going to make their own guidelines, the rules, regulations. So we'll get that information from our school system and pass that information along. So I thought it was interesting. GHSA is also about letting schools – Individual schools make the decision on bands and mascots and cheerleaders, so be interested to see what kind of decisions are made regarding all that. I think some schools aren't letting their – and I saw a lot of colleges aren't letting the bands play this year, so we'll see what the high schools decide to do. So be sad if they won't let the band in. But well, if you're in the band, though, you can't get six feet apart. That's right. You've got to be – hard to social distance right. the band. Yes. Right, yes. So. But we are set for the fourth, seven thirty in Statesboro. Yeah, right. It was originally set for the fifth on a you know Saturday night, nine o'clock. But that event in Allen Paul Stadium has been canceled. But Statesboro and Wayne kind of got together and agreed to do a home and home. So we'll go to Statesboro this year, and then Statesboro will come to our place next year to start the season. So again, that's a seven thirty game, two weeks from this Friday, September the fourth in Statesboro at Statesboro High School. And have we seen a Georgia Southern schedule yet? I haven't seen one, but. I know it's out. I know Army's on the schedule. Uh, they had to pick up some games. That's why they so, picked up the Black Knights. Right, So, which is their ex-coach, and Jeff Monken, so that will be an interesting ball game. But um, I think this, the schedule being put together is about, but we'll check. But I think they're about ready to get going. I know Georgia Tech and Georgia schedule is out. So both are started practice also this week to get underway on Monday. So things are progressing. And it's interesting to listen to Clay Travis, the – Big Ten is still <laughs> pleading parents, athletes pleading for the Big Ten to play. So it would be interesting to see. He said something about possible a lawsuit oh where they make, uh, they make a judge make a decision on whether or not the wow. Big Ten is going to play. So we'll continue to follow that. But it will be interesting to see how all that plays out. But the SEC, ACC, and the Big 12 sticking to their guns. They're going to play college football. So we have a full slate that we made up the Jenkins game, so we have the right. same number of regular season right. games that we yeah, have. South Ev- yeah, South Effingham is in the – if you look at your schedule, like Jenkins, the city of Savannah, schools decide to just play in Savannah. But the B.C. game, B.C. is a private, private school. Yeah. They can do what they want to do, so the B.C. game is still intact. And, again, we uh, substituted South Effingham for the Jenkins game. So Mustangs. Everything else is – uh, intact, yeah. South Effingham, a former region opponent, so we're familiar with them. So they should still have a good scouting report on that team. So, but again, we'll see how it all plays out. Looking forward to it. two weeks from Friday, the season begins.
and we'll wait to see exactly how it all falls together for fans in the stands and the band right. and everything for us. And I'm sure That's that it. you're going to go on the road to some places and they're not going to let the band go or not, not going to let anybody in the stands. And, and just hope they let us in. You know, that's the thing. That's, you're going to have to get out yeah. ahead of time whether they're going to let right. you in or not. Exactly. So got to call Statesboro the next couple of days make sure. But that they got a pretty spacious press box. It shouldn't be an issue. Right. But a lot of schools don't have big, spacious press box. So like I said, you know, when you go to Friday night, you normally see people jammed in all these press boxes. So with social distancing, I don't know how they're going to do a lot of stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how each school system decides what they want to do. But GHSA, again, has pretty much given you leeway. Right. I mean, their statement this week yeah. says that each school makes those decisions. So each individual school system, they're asking to come up with a plan on how they're going to deal with Fans and concessions and everything on a Friday night. Bathrooms, right? The everything whole nine yards. So it's, yeah. So a lot of decision making in the next two weeks, but that's the word from the GHSA. They're moving forward. Each school comes up with their own plan, and you know, Friday night will be a good test. You know, to see how fans you know, do they wear the mask? What happens if they don't wear the mask? Will they be let in? All that stuff. So right, we'll find out Friday night. But looking forward to that. But the weatherman probably will have something to say about that, too, because the weather forecast hasn't looked good the last Yeah, couple. showers yeah. on the way. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the softball game, yeah, those were some ugly skies yesterday. So they never got on the field. They just sat around and watched it lightning. And that was the JV over there at uh, Bill Morris or whatever, whichever field they were in. Was that, yesterday? that was middle school. Middle school. Middle yeah. school. Okay, they had a pretty good crowd there until the rain came through and wiped everything out pretty quickly. Uh, I'm amazed that you know people are interested and want to see these games because they've been away for so long. All right, anything else we need to cover this morning, Bob? I think that does it. I said Jay Brinson, the superintendent right. of schools, will be our guest tomorrow on the World Fans Butch Bob Show. I'm sure he'll have a lot more information regarding all these topics, so it'll be fun to talk to him tomorrow and get some more information on what the school decides to do on Friday night. So, all right. Thank you very much, Bob.